Alright, here we go. Now we're good to go. Sorry about that. You guys can all see my screen. Yes, I can. Great. Yep. Cool. So, um, all right. Um, Siko, do you want to uh, tell us what you've been you've been up to, or anything you want to talk about? So I've been following those uh, tutorial about the neural network that you point me to. Let me present my screen. Um, let's actually, one second here, so let's actually go through what everybody wants to talk about first. I've been deviating, uh, this is so, the format that I'm trying to stick to is that we go through what everybody wants to talk about first, and then we go back and talk about everything. Um, so let's, let's, yeah. is there anything else that you want to talk about? Yeah, I, I found some problem in the tutorial that I will talk about. Yes. Okay, so found, so. All right, great, okay. And then Shaw, so um, what do you, what would you like to talk about today? Uh, not much really, I saw that, um, I saw that code that you'd sent me for, um, I think it was gradient boosting. And I've been trying to uh, train multiple features using that and it's been going well so far. I've gotten into a bit of trouble with the accuracy score, but other than that, I think it should be fine. Okay, cool. Um, I thought we had, um, I swear I saw um, Sudhanshu in the lobby trying to join this meeting, but I don't know what happened. Um, hmm, weird. Okay, so waiting or working on um, uh, so anomaly detection model um, with multiple features. Right, and yeah, so let's see. We may end up just using yeah we need we need to we need to have an example on how to use multiple features there um okay so yeah. it's it's honestly fine like uh, it works uh, so before you sent me that i tried training it using a single feature and uh, it works for um, one feature so i'm assuming generalizing it to multiple features shouldn't be that hard yeah i mean the features is just going to give you an array basically um so yeah, if, if, it it would just be nice, you know, if we had to, if we had that as a part of the tutorial. Um, I was trying to. I haven't had a chance to go through and maybe do like you know we have the simple linear regression. I was thinking, you know, I wonder if we can do one of those, uh, like a multivariate linear regression from from without any dependencies, because um, that keeps it sort of you know nice and clean actually. But you know, we could we could just add some dependencies to it and and do it with I don't know. NumPy or Scikit or something, and then show how to do dependencies. Um, but I think we have a little section on that too. So I don't know. It's something to think about in the future. All right. So, anyways, we're working through anomaly detection model with multiple features, um, and we'll put that you uh, saw XGBoost code. Um, uh, so things. Okay. We'll just we'll just wait. Okay, so um, all right. So and I'll cover my stuff last here. But so let's see. So you, Siko, you said you found some stuff um, going through the tutorial. And did you want to sort of show us what you were show us what's going on here, or you want to talk about some some? You want to get down some bullet points of what you found first, or you want to just show us? Yeah, I think I will show. Okay. So. Mm. Stop presenting. Oh, All right. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Now I have some about the model dot number five. We have the name of the 
Thai giờ này thì đã using Z to define what type of này by touch you going to get word but the real name of the này is the key right here mm -hmm. this also I think I will we should change it now key to near Thai or the Thai or something like that oh okay so yeah Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I was looking at you know I was just looking at TensorFlow because I looked at your your code and I saw that TensorFlow has now a nice high level interface through Keras to the same type of thing, um, and I was I was sort of thinking the same same thing. So yeah, so name really is not not the best thing for that. So let's let's make a note. Actually, here I'll make my notes off screen. Um, now I close that meeting minutes doc. Um, all right okay um yeah here i'll make a note of that you won't you won't see me making notes but i'm taking notes here so um got another 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 computer to take notes with let's see so found some issues in the tutorial okay come on all right so uh for um model yaml files um we should have the name property be something like layer type um since the name is already the key right yes okay cool all right about the input channel of the second layer oh, it have too much the uh, output channel of the first layer or something like the third or the second so this thing the user have to calculate that themselves yeah right mm -hmm. okay and so i think that kind of aeroponds so if we um, we can just I carry it over uh, Okay, it of uh, some automatically. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. So let's um, see. Um, so, so in layer or in channels of uh, next layer, or let's see, oh, I should just put so out channel. So out, sorry, out channels of previous layer should be used as in channels of next layer unless overridden yes all right cool so i also saw it now forward um, and that few things are here what does it do? And I saw that it has the same uh, number of unit as it in the layer here. Mm -hmm. So does it affect anything? Yeah, so we need some explanation around that. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. All right, yeah, that's, let's see. Um, yeah, it's too bad we don't have sock shell. Okay, let's see, so... We um, need this one. Okay, let me and let me just look at this. Okay, so forward block one of you pooling comp three view negative one and then the in features for linear. Okay, yeah, so hmm, okay, interesting. All right, so we need hmm, not around. Um, you uh, 96 uh, being the same as in channels all right so hmm, okay wait a minute so it's basically saying so pooling all right so yeah so we have l r u or l r e l u then we have pooling then we have linear so we're doing comp one, our pooling comp two, our pooling comp two, our pooling comp three, 
are pulling. And then we do view. Um, is view, can you scroll up to view? Is that defined there? No. No, view is not defined there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> All right, okay. So around view. Um, so what is it? Is it? And okay, yeah, that's important. We need to be explaining that. What is it? Um, what is negative one and twenty-eight? All right. All right. So it has. So yeah, whatever the. My guess is. My guess is I haven't looked at this um, in a while, but. My guess is that the negative one is just whatever's coming in there, and then one one or twelve ninety six is is the out, so that it can be the input of linear. But yeah, I mean we need that needs to be explained. So and what is view and why is it just all of a sudden appearing out of nowhere? Um, okay, cool. Um, yeah, let's keep going then. Now is it not? Tell us that now we define some layer. In have this syntax, I'm not sure that uh, the Q1 and they are two does it as if it do. Okay, mm, let's see. So, let's find out. Also, be created by indenting the layers under key. Okay. Sequential layers can be created by indenting layers under a key. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this. Um, I think he needs a separate tutorial on this um, because I think that it ends up being like, um, where is a good? Ex I think there's an example somewhere. Oh no, come on. Um, uh, so okay, I'm gonna find an example and I'll send it to you in a link in the meeting. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, I think it's under the test cases. So, uh, model and then PyTorch and then, uh, where's the tests? PyTorch net. Okay. Where does he do that? Um, Hmm. Maybe there is not a test case for this. I swear I saw that syntax somewhere because I think I think this comes down to we need a separate tutorial showing that um, because you know it's basically he's basically saying that yeah I'm not seeing this where the hell did it go yeah it's not good yeah we need that I swear there was a model YAML file in here somewhere. Yeah, no, I guess not. Okay. Yeah, we need another tutorial it's just because basically what he's saying is that, you know, you can take, uh, for example, if you looked at like pooling or linear, um, and if you indented them one, and then, uh, so if you made, if you made something right, so at the same indentation level as they are, right? Um, yeah, so if you indent them one, and then put them under something called pooling underscore linear, then you're creating a sequential layer with those two inside it. I believe that's that's what he's saying. Um, but this needs a whole tutorial because that's sort of, I remember him telling me about this, but I think that maybe, oh, maybe this is the tutorial he's working on actually. Um, so that might be good. So this is good feedback for Sakshom. So, all right. Um, all right, so we need a, a full example around uh, creating, uh, creating sequential layers. Um, is this the tutorial? All right, so it's just, all right. Well, we'll just put we'll just put that there. Okay. Uh, all right, let's keep going. I think I'm certain. Where's that for the now? Sorry, what? I think I finished there. Is that too the ring RS? Okay, cool, cool. All right, that's great. Thank you for 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 um you know making note of this feedback because um, this is important. 
Um, so you haven't you haven't gotten a chance to go through it or to finish it yet, right? Yes. Let's see what's what's the current error here. Uh, uh, oh, I think maybe we just missed. Uh, oh yeah, you can't put a you can't put the uh, um, pound sign in the middle of a bash command. Um, you can't comment like that. This is this has gotten me many 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 times. Um, yeah, you can, and, and I think if you just, I would just delete that line if you don't have a GPU on here, you can always add it in later. Or if you want to do a comment, you can move it above the command. Like, um, so yeah, if I, if I need to comment in a multi-line command like that, I usually just take the line and put it as a comment above there. Okay. And let's uh -huh. see what happened. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Untype has no attribute function okay so the loss function stuff is not working so it figured out it created the network um but it said none type has no attribute and are you are you doing just basically directly from the so what is so model hyphen loss cross entropy loss so that looks correct to me um uh, Oh, wait a minute. I'm, oh, yeah, maybe it's not quite correct. Um, in, no? Cross entropy loss. Yeah, that's the same spelling. No, I'm um, that now. Fake now is, is missing a character. Missing that what? Now, a single character. <laughs> yeah, did you see that? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, okay. This is probably going to fix it for us then. <laughs> so we need, okay, now the next thing though is that we, that was not a helpful error message. So, um, need helpful error messages uh, when loss function is uh, misspelled. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, all right. Yeah, let's see what happens here. You take it wide. Yeah. Then, I need formula meter. We should can combine data. Oh, well, nice. <laughs> hey, it's using all the cores. That's good. Yes. Oh yeah, it's definitely working this time. Um, yes. Let's see. So while this is while this is going, I'll just go over briefly some of the stuff um, that I was going to talk about here. Um, yes. Just because my my sort of updates for everyone are quick. Um, basically, um, let's see. So yeah, those are the notes that I took. Um, all right, so the we have one of the, one of the models is del for pi. So model del for pi. Um, so I uh, talked. So I talked to the people who do the the release of it. Um, del for pi. Um, and they basically told me that they're targeting a PyPy release at the end of this year. They're trying to get it out at the end of the year here. Um, because right now, this is our only thing tying us to Conda. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so that's my update, really. Um, so talk to the maintainers. Um, they are hoping to have a PyPy release out by the end of the year. Uh, this should be the last uh, package we, or last dependency we currently have that relies on Conda. Um, 
So that would be great because then everything would just be pip because we have so much stuff that deals with setting up Conda and it takes a while in the CI. Um, and then the 0.4.0 uh, release candidate. Uh, so I've been um, trying to figure out how to make this happen. Um, you should see it. I was hoping to have it right as we um, right as we started today, but I think I have a couple things left, which is basically just um, what was it? Um, now I forgot one of them, which is not good. Um, Git log. Okay. Yeah, I was fixing the documentation. I was checking for the. Oh, I need to make sure. Um, so some so Windows and uh, Mac OS are currently. Oh, okay. So I. So here's here's something interesting. So for for um, people to know, is that um, so I've created a new branch, um, and basically this is going to be the if we do like a 4.1 or whatever, it'll go on this branch. Um, and one of the things that I did is I set up pinning of the dependencies um, because we found that um, people would upgrade things because we had the uh, we had these version ranges on here. And it would result in, um, you know, as we develop, right, um, we want to make sure that the latest version of all these packages is getting installed. And uh, and that way, you know, we're always, you know, our, our, we find issues as they come up if people upgrade. Um, you know, if people push new versions of things and our code breaks because we were doing certain things with the old the way the old version worked we want to know about that right away um, as we're pushing a master branch but then uh, what we found is that you know with the latest release version um, what hap what will happen is um, uh, oops, let me just... oh here's Sudhanshu um, hey Sudhanshu um, so what we found is that with the latest release version what will happen is you know we have these version ranges on here and then you know maybe somebody one of these packages updates and now things are no longer compatible um, and then you know everything blows up so what I did is I went and I made it so that they are all pinned to a specific version um, so basically everybody if you install the, the release version of DFFML you're guaranteed um, that all these packages have been tested together at these versions um, now that that may cause a few issues with you know when people want to update different packages but they can always use you know a virtual environment or something um, but this should this should result in in, in a working environment um, with versions of packages that all work together. Um, so yeah. Um, oh wait, I wasn't sharing my screen. Damn it. Uh, an error occurred while screen sharing. Uh, are you guys seeing my screen? Nope. Nope. It says oh, that's weird. Okay. Um, let's try this again. Sorry, I thought you were all sharing my seeing my screen for that whole time. All right, can you see it now? Almost. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I was talking about here. Is yeah. basically they all have equals equals now, um, and this is only going to happen on on the this branch, which is the we'll do branches for releases. Um, okay. Um, all right. So let's go back. Does that uh, did that model finish training yeah it's finished okay cool is there um is it is it do you want to keep going through that or or does it seem um do you think you'll you'll go through it offline i think i will do it at all okay cool all right is there anything else you wanted to talk about oh about the dependency that you mentioned I think TensorFlow Tensor and NumPy have some problem with each other. I think TensorFlow 2.3 it um, requires NumPy version less than 1.18. Uh, I think that might be, is this, are you talking yes. about this? Yes, I think yeah. it was that. Okay, yeah, and so this is part of what happened here is basically, um, I think, I think, and yeah, let's see, where did that go? Um, where did that go? Where's the pin depths? Okay. Um, so yeah, so I think what happened here is that TensorFlow, yeah, it got pinned to 2.2.1. 2 
because um, I think I'm not sure we need to ch actually that's a good thing to check on we should check on um, I should go check and see if this is um, still an issue because it would be best if we could be doing a release with two point whatever the latest version of TensorFlow is um, so good 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 check okay so um, broken and I think these are broken because of my dependency pinning um, probably because of dependency pinning um, on Mac OS. Uh, and I think this is Whirlpool Webit. Um, okay. And then um, should check in about TensorFlow 2.3.0 and NumPy uh, before release. Okay, and um, let's see, was there anything else that we should look at? Um, any, or, oh, what was the last thing? I had one more thing that I was going to note. Um, any, yeah, anybody else got anything that we should look at before this release candidate um, goes out? Because, I mean, this isn't going to be the final version of this release, and we'll do more releases afterwards. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we'd like we'd like this one to work, right? <laughs> we'd like this to work too. So, um, yeah, if, if you if you think of anything, um, just just put it in Gitter, or if anybody has anything now, let me know. All right. So, yeah, I think these are the main main things. Um, and then, what was the last thing? There's one other thing, but it's not really, it doesn't really matter. I'll let you guys all know when this comes out, and then well, we can see if, it, if it's working correctly. So, um, okay. All right, cool. So, um, we'll go, we'll go through rest of tutorial offline. All right. So, Shaw, um, did you, did you want to, so you saw the XG boost code. You said that things seem to be, you know, you, you figured out the multiple features. Um, anything else you want to talk about on this? Uh, no, there might be something like in the coming week uh, that uh, I might need help with, but not right now. Okay. Not at the moment, no. Cool. Uh, so yeah, so ping team on Gitter, um, and we can help. And if you need some one-on-one, -on -one, and this goes for everybody, you know, when or, if you ever need some one-on-one -on -one time with with me or with anybody else, you know, you can always just reach out to us and, and ask. Um, you know, I'm obviously like the the primary maintainer here, so I've like I can probably answer the most breadth of questions. Um, but you know, for certain things like if people have written like, for example, Sakshom has written this neural network tutorial, and there's there's various. If you find something that, um, you know, if you reach out to me about something, and I I may refer you to the person who actually wrote the tutorial, or you know, who did whatever you're you're looking at, right? Um, but you know, you can always reach out to me, and you can always reach out to the Gator channel, and usually somebody will direct you in the right the right direction of whoever knows most about what you're asking about, and you can always set up a meeting with somebody right to to do some one on one time if you need extra extra working through on something. Um, all right, so Sudhanshu. Um, all right, so Sudhanshu, I saw you push some more actually stuff. Um, how is that going? Uh, yeah, so. Uh, uh, I needed help with the uh, uh, the what was it? I forgot the QA model. The QA model, okay. So yeah, because I, I don't know like what's we, what's wrong with that, and also Dal for Pi. Because in the Dal for Pi, it is uh, not showing any error in the logs. Oh, I think this is one where we may need to cherry pick a commit for Dal Dal for Pi because I noticed that I noticed that um, yeah, I think this is just an issue where um, I fixed this recently on Master, so I'll find uh, I think I think yes, this segmentation. I have no idea what the hell is going on. Yeah, this is like this is a mess. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, okay. So I'll make note of that. So um, Dal for Pi. 
the alpha pi should be a cherry pick from master. Um, hopefully. <laughs> um, and then, um, so QA model, um, John will take a look. Um, okay, so let me and let me just sort of look at it now since we're here and we got time. Um, all right, so let me pull this down. Uh, and also, uh, there is a new version of Auto Escalon. Oh, there is. And okay. yes, uh, uh, some eleven version is there, and because of that, like some of uh, the, the tests in my branch are actually failing. Okay. But in the main branch, it's it's working fine. Okay. Yeah, I think I went and updated. Okay, so that's another cherry pick. So, auto sk learn is failing. Um, need to cherry pick from master. All right. Okay. Execute model. Let's take a look. Uh, okay. Um. I have this open three times apparently. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, what what's going on here? Oh. All right, so uh, was this the Transformers one? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Oh, and I think we also, so Yash and I recently worked through something. So, you know, we should probably rebase this whole situation pretty soon here because there's been a lot of work done on Master that uh, yeah, we should rebase it after we're done with Phase 5. Here. Yes, because I don't have much of the changes. Yeah, yeah. I think, and we've, we've had a, a few things here that, that have, like, we fixed the caching on this model. See, it downloads multiple times, and we fixed that recently. So we'll need to um, need to be sure to rebase after phase five. Okay, yeah, because we're cherry picking lots of things now. <laughs> yes, it will result in a lot of merge conflict. Right? Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of merge conflicts. Yeah, I mean, I hope we don't because we haven't had a ton of activity on a lot of the models, um, other than you know a few fixes here and there. So I hope it'll be okay. Um, you know, there's been no major refactors going on to, to a lot of this code. So, you know, hopefully you should have minimal uh, conflicts. Yep. Um, let's see. So, okay, well, we know which ones are failing, so let's just do this. Okay, so. Oh, that's the classifier. We wanted the QA, so test. QA model. Okay. QA model. Let's check this out. QA config object has no attribute predict. Is this the error you're seeing? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Is Was... this because uh, uh, the predict is actually some different name? Oh, yeah. But this is also an NLP model, right? So we can't just do MSE on it, right? 
or yes we cannot do it but actually previously like it used to work oh it did <laughs> <laughs> hmm. okay um hmm. well i'm wondering if that's i mean you know just because it used to work maybe that that wasn't a good thing right um so so squared error accuracy okay test qa model okay so it worked back here um score msc But at some point you took out the transformers. Okay. Didn't we take out the method at some point? Or maybe I mean let me just go look. Uh yes. For some reason, I'm not seeing that commit um, pre-process data. Oh yeah, no, okay, we haven't taken out the accuracy method. That's probably what was going on, is because you just switched it so that it's not being overridden, or it's not using this method anymore, right? So that's probably why it's not working. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. Yeah, because it used to just basically, you know, if this method was being, this this is overriding the base class, right? So, yeah, we were basically not seeing that. So I think you just need to implement this as an accuracy score, right? Yes. Okay. Is that, are you, uh, are you good on that? Um, then do we need to dig more into this or, I mean, I can. Uh, no, I think. Let me see. Uh, I'll let you know when I will need your help. Okay. I think we are good. Okay. Yeah. I think you'll yeah, probably just put it in a score. Um, okay. Sweet. All right. Well, that's that's glad we figured that out. Um, all right. So uh, uh, it turned. It happened to be that we never removed the accuracy method from the QA model um, as such we needed to okay um, happened to be that we never removed the accuracy method from the QA model um, we just need to make it to a score all right, cool. Okay, so and then auto SK learn and Dal for Pi are cherry picks. Um, let's see. So let me see um, if we can just fix those real quick. So this guy yeah I basically did I used I figured out we can use that make make numpy config on this um, because it was another case where they had changed the um, they had changed the the, the, the config problem yeah the config I wonder if that'll apply wow that applied great git is amazing <laughs> uh, let's see Okay, so and then 
this is delta pi. So So we'll look at the commits from master, and we'll look for del for pi. Okay, so okay, so now supported on Python 2.8. Update for three. Okay, I think that was it. Yeah, this is not it. This is this is way long ago. Okay, so. All right, so yeah, so I think, yeah, November 16th, this sounds right. All right, so basically there was some issue in the CI where, yeah, it started seg faulting like that for some reason. I think a sub dependency updated because we had those pinned to like the January release from 2020, um, but, oh crap. Um, but, um, it then I think something else got updated somehow. Oh, great. All right, this is going to be, this is a thing. Um, all right, get status. Um, what do we want to find the Docker file? Oh, did I do? Um, oh, maybe you don't have the Docker file commits. Yeah. Okay. Where's the Docker file update? Um, update existing packages container. Um, okay. Yeah. At some point, the Docker file got updated. All right. Now we got to do. Yeah. So this is why we got to rebase. Um, uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. All right, so this is the last time that got touched in here. So we need to basically just grab origin master. So we need to look at origin master. We need to look at the changes to the Docker file. And we need to grab a bunch of these commits. Um, Okay, I guess we'll do that first. Let's, let's just make sure that these are all just changes to the Docker file. Okay, so Docker file, Docker file, Docker file. All right, the beauty of small commits allows us to cherry pick them. <laughs> all right, so. Okay, so let's do this guy and this guy. And then, okay, now we're back to the one that we were doing, which is that, oh gosh, I'm lost here. All right, so we're looking at Dal for Pi now, so we can probably go back and keep looking at Dal for Pi. So what was that that I was doing? I was doing git log dash p to show me the changes to all the files, and then we're looking for Dal Dal for Pi. Okay. Um, oh wait, on the master branch. All right. So. Uh, uh, that's the requirements txt stuff. We don't care about that right now. All right, so where was this? It was like November 16th. So now supported on 3.8. Um, actually, we don't really need this dash p here. Okay. Yeah, so now we can grab these guys.
So just for anybody that's not very familiar with what I'm doing right now, basically we can take, by, by keeping commits nice and small, we can, um, we can, we can take them and we can apply them on, on a different branch. Um, so Sudhanshu's branch um, split off from everything else quite a while ago. Um, and, and so we've, we, we haven't done, because he's doing a, a lot of, a lot of uh, work that touches a lot of places where we have a different branch um, that he's working on. And so every once in a while we'll rebase in the changes from master, which is basically, um, it's kind of like a merge, um, if you're more familiar with a merge, but so a merge kind of shoves things in, in a weird order. And then it creates a merge commit. Whereas a rebase will go and it'll replay your work on top of um, another branch. So basically, it's like you any commits that you did get added on top of, uh, you know, so that you maintain a nice linear history. Um, okay, so. Okay, um, let's see. Model switches don't support Windows or Mac OS, so DFMO. Um, okay, you know, I don't know if we really care about this this one because this is the one which is now supported on 3.8 and we don't really care about testing support for 3.8 within this branch so get cherry pick abort um okay and then fix style for pi okay and i don't do we care about that one too i'm not sure if we even care about that one that get log dash p this guy is basically just added in, and I think we removed it in this one, so I think we're good. So let's just check here. So, um, so what did we just do? We added these. Okay, so container with all plugins. Um, diff install run container run container. Okay, and. More container stuff. Okay, so we applied this make numpy config one for auto sk learn. So here's your last commit where we fix you fix the string matching. Okay, um, and then this is the auto sk learn commit, and then this one is the first Docker commit that we did. So then we got that by doing this um, to look at the changes to the Docker file here. Um, so that was. Yeah, let's not stat. That's hard to read. So basically we went and we said, okay, show me the commits on master branch um, that are related to. So then this separator says, okay, now these are just files, right? So um, show me any commits that changed the Docker file. And so we went and we said, okay, this was the last one that we had on this branch. So we needed this one and this one and this one. Um, at least to keep going to, to get to the point where we could start applying stuff. So we grabbed those. So this is that first one, um, a two or wait, oh, it creates a new, yeah, the new, the SHA will change because we're applying it to a different branch. Um, and then this is the next one, list all models. Yep. And then we should have the update. Yep. So update to 2020.3. Um, so this is the one that, and, and this is the version fix that actually fixes the problem. Now the problem is that now the another problem is that when you go, to, when you upgrade to this version, there's another issue, which is this issue that comes up and this is the fix for the issue that arises when you upgrade to this version. So we've got to work around to that fix and hopefully this should be um, good now. Um, so I'll push this, um, so get log one line. Okay, so we added these five commits here. All right, so, and then hopefully that fixes. Um, so, okay, so needed. Let me actually go grab those so we remember what we did here. Uh, following because of docker file changes we needed some of those commits too all right and of course it's not guaranteed that you can just pull commits off things and everything will work fine so 
um, we uh, we'll, we'll see what the CI tells us after we apply these commits. Um, I I you know usually when things apply cleanly, that means that you know everything was added in a reasonable order. Um, but you know you can just pull random changes to you know you, if a commit like changed, for example, a test file, right? Um, and you just pulled the changes to the test file, and you know there may have been some commits that changed the main model that the file the test was testing. Um, then obviously you're now going to end up with a test that doesn't pass, right? So you got to be careful when you cherry pick commits. Um, it's not a guarantee that everything's going to work. Um, you're just pulling changes to certain files, certain changes to certain files. Um, okay. All right. So I think that. We are. Is there anything else um, you want to talk about, Sudhanshu? Uh, no. Uh, that's it. Okay. Um, great. All right. Anything anybody wants to talk about? All right. Otherwise, we will call it a day. And wow, this is the first time in a while that we actually ended up uh, before time. Nice, nice work, everybody. Okay. So, Sudhanshu. Um, so, uh, okay, needed some cherry picked commits, um, and then issue with commit QA, issue with QA model, issue method still being around, okay. Great. All right. Nice work, everybody. Um, we will uh, talk uh, next week, and I've got a we got a holiday in the states coming up um, Thanksgiving um, on Thursday. Um, so I may or probably won't be around on Thursday, um, but um, other than that, I should be should be around. So you can always ping me on Gitter if you need anything. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day or night, depending on where you are. Bye. Bye. Bye.